everybody and welcome back to my channel. This is the first of two videos in a short series on how I made my own interpretation of this beautiful pink Regency Spencer from the latest adaptation of Jane Austen's Emma. I started out with the idea of following an historical pattern, so I pulled out my Regency Women's Dress Book by Cassidy Pococo and turned to the Regency Spencer pattern. This is the first time I have attempted this and you will see how I go. To actually make these patterns, I started with a very small piece because I thought that would be easiest. And originally, I tried to sort of like measure things out and do it on just sort of a blank page. That I was like, mm, that's a bit difficult. So then what it is, I drew my own one inch grid because at the bottom of the book, the grid is in one inch. And then sort of copied it and I thought, there is no way I'm going to draw up a one inch grid for things like this piece, it's huge. So then what I decided to do is I actually printed out a whole lot of these pages with a one inch grid on it. And what I then did is I stuck a whole lot of these together to make a big page of one inch grid. And then I've used tracing paper and I've used the grid to actually then draw all of the pattern pieces. And here they all are in all their pattern piece glory. I don't know if this is going to fit, if it's going to work. I'm going to have to alter everything. And of course, all of these pieces are without seam allowance. So I'm going to have to add that when I put these onto the fabric. I added a one centimeter seam allowance using my ruler and pencil, drew in the cutting line and cut each pattern piece out. I then began assembling the mock-up. Now I only had my knowledge of modern pattern construction to go from as there are no construction instructions in the book itself. Needless to say, this didn't work. It was all wrong and I didn't dedicate the time to alter it, so I decided to move on to method two. I have tried with the pattern from the book and it just doesn't work. It's very small and I tried to make it bigger and that just didn't work. So what I did is I ended up finding a historical pattern online, did a digital download, which I will link it down below, and then I ended up getting it printed out. Um, a zero size paper, so it's by Reconstruction History. Now I will throw it out here that this didn't work either, but I think it's my own fault and I didn't dedicate the time to work out why and try to fix it. I've only ever heard great things about reconstructing history patterns, and they have patterns from a huge range of eras. So please go over to their website, which is linked below, and check it out. Um, and this is a pattern for a riding jacket and a Regency Spencer. And I'm reading through all of the instructions. However, I am really confused about something because it has here that the jacket back is cut along the selvage, not along the fold. There is no um, seam line down the back. Obviously, this is a printing mistake in the pattern and the fold should be where it says selvage and the selvage should be where it says fold. Let's move on. I cut out all of the pattern pieces and stitched them together according to the instructions. I have just made up this cotton teaking mock-up. I just, I don't know what is going on, but it is so short. I need an extra, like, this much at the back. I mean, I know that these things tended to go up a little bit at the back, so I'm really confused as to what I'm doing wrong. I'll update you in a bit. So, after that calamity, I decided I needed to get this project rolling as I was already strapped for time and I've been working on this for a few weeks. So I left the realms of historical patterns, of which I fully plan to return to at a later date, and I moved on to a commercial pattern. I ended up using the Butterick B6074 on the right, and I altered it a fair bit to get exactly what I wanted. I used the collar piece from the Butterick B6537 on the left, as it is exactly what I needed. Okay, I have finally made some progress. I'm feeling good about this mock-up. Um, it's designed to meet in the middle at the front here. I've got these very long darts here and here. It's going to be covered by all the detailing that's going along the front anyway. I would like these to come down sort of here a bit more. 
So I'm actually going to cut this along this line so that the shoulder seam ends up being about there instead. Otherwise, the only thing I am going to change is that this is it's too long in the body. So just doing a single roll up sort of gives me that better length. I'm actually really happy with it. I didn't film this process because I just needed to get it done and I will show you how I make it with the actual fabric. So I cut and unpicked the mock-up so I could use the pieces as a pattern. I drew around each piece on some tracing paper so I could have a paper pattern as well. Finally, I was ready to cut out my actual fabric. The original jacket from the film is a beautiful soft pink woolen suiting fabric, as far as I can tell, and I couldn't find anything like it, so I decided to choose colour over fibre and I went with this beautiful soft pink velvet. I usually only work with cotton or silk velvet and this is a man-made fibre, but this was as good as it was going to get. I also used a soft white cotton for the lining and had a few other notions to make the cording and buttons. And now the cutting out begins. If you want to see how I made this jacket, make sure you click the link below and watch part two. You'll also get to see the reveal of the finished product. Thank you so much for watching.